it is time for phase three, stage three of building out and simplifying your go-to-market uh, plan, your go-to-market playbook. We started with a couple of uh, discussions around like understanding our customer, you know, knowing what problems they have, uh, knowing how they're solving those problems, uh, identifying where they hang out, uh, creating ways for us to engage with customers. And we got into the structure of the organization. How do we actually organize um, the, the gen our general uh, strategy around demand, acquisition, retention, expansion? So today we're going to go in and get into some detail around how do we evaluate those components of the dare to grow model and then start layering in things like customers, our business, and our people. So remember, uh, D stands for demand. We've got, you know, you might have a one to many, one to one, and a partnerships uh, perspective on generating demand. Generate money through acquisition. And then on the other side, you retain and expand. Now, we broke these down into individual buckets on each side. We had um, you know, enterprise accounts as an example, might have SMB, inside acquisition as two separate areas, inside retention expansion, strategic accounts, general accounts, and then churn. Now, we want to rate, give ourselves a score of one to 10 in each of these areas. Uh, what's our current assessment of how we're doing from a, a one to many, uh, one to one and uh, partnerships as an example. How are, well are we, what's our current rating on a one to 10 scale of uh, enterprise and of SMB? And then do the same thing inside strategic accounts, et cetera. Well, once you go through this rating process, then you can identify, okay, uh, from a people perspective inside our business, where can we start to uh, build uh, additional capacity? Do we want to have a specific leader that's responsible for acquisition, retention, and expansion? Uh, this might be a sales leader, a VP of sales. Do we want to have a VP of marketing responsible for uh, demand? Do we want to specialize inside each of these other areas and have people who focus on individual components, uh, indi the individual boxes in our broader go-to-market uh, strategy. All of this is around um, thinking about how do we identify people to focus on addressing specific challenges inside the business so that we can improve from maybe a, uh, a five state on strategic accounts to an eight or a 10 or improve relative to the SMB space from a two to a six. So we start to put people inside this equation and start to address the challenge. And we need to organize people around teams. So we have some kind of a leadership structure that we use. And then we start to think about how did this, the team interact with other uh, functional areas inside our organization. So we might have, um, you know, we might in a PLG, product-led growth motion, uh, product might take a high amount of um, uh, might take on a high amount of responsibility relative to how we grow from initial acquisition to that uh, retention and expansion. Yeah, there are no right ways or wrong ways to organize your uh, to organize your organization around this. But I, what I think you can do, and I, I know you can do, is be more deliberate about how you make decisions around how you organize people uh, and process in these individual areas. So that's the internal lens. Where do we want to put our people? How does product relate to this? How does ops relate to this? That's internal. Well then, on the remember, we've got clients that are out there. So what about our clients? How are we supporting them in their experience throughout this over, overall journey? Well, we're supporting them with some people. We're sort of, sort of supporting them with some process. We're supporting them with some technology. We need to understand how clients integrate into all of this from a modeling perspective so that we're not building in a way that ends up negatively impacting our customers. Let's build in a way where we enable our customers. So we've got to understand things from the customer's perspective. 
not only from that part that we talked about in the first uh, session, which is that whole unknown problem to known problem to unknown solution to known solution to at the end, they're shouting from the rooftops and they're referring people back into the organization. So they become a really awesome demand channel. So we need to understand things from the client perspective. We need to understand things from the business perspective. And then the last piece, and actually I think it's one of the more important pieces that people are starting to talk a little a bit more about. It's how what's the experience like for um, the individuals inside our organization? How are we designing and enabling for employees to be more effective, not only in these individual roles, but across multiple teams. So we've got problems that we solve for, we've got ways that we solve for those problems, we've got um, structure that we put in place, process to help uh, enable customers, and then we have people who need to interact with those customers. This stuff is hard it doesn't need to be overly complicated. Uh, when you're first starting your go-to-market, uh, you might have one person who's responsible for all of these things. You as the founder might be responsible for demand, acquisition, retention, expansion. Then you'll get to a point where you start to specialize and you start to figure out how do I bring people in to amplify, augment, um, drive additional capability. But as you look at this whole model, think about it in the context of the people you serve, both outside of your organization, inside your organization, and then how they fit in to the broader structure. And over time, what you will find is you, you will identify additional areas inside each of these buckets where you can start to specialize. I would be careful about specializing a bit too soon. One more story uh, to consider, you know, think about it when you first started riding a bike, uh, you probably had one of those three wheelers or today you know, kids are riding around in balanced bikes. There's not a lot of other pieces to it. Then you moved on to one that might have uh, a couple of other moving parts like a crank or some gears. Then maybe some of you moved on to the point where you're actually riding a motorized bicycle or a motorcycle and then some of uh, some people might move on to the point where they're riding one of those uh, rockets uh, across the salt flats uh, you don't need to build the rocket across the salt flats when you first start this let's first start with gaining forward momentum and be as simple as possible reduce variables as you go through and make sure you understand the specific jobs to be done well, I hope you enjoyed this series if you'd like help inside your organization, this is one of the things that I do uh, with companies. It's uh, about laying it out on a whiteboard, figuring out where all of our puzzle pieces are, and then starting to identify where some of our gaps. Um, I'm happy to facilitate that conversation with you. I'm happy to continue the conversation in a way that makes sense for you. Uh, the way to start is to book a clarity call with me, and you can find uh, that link on findmycatalyst.com. Thank you.